This is my Mazda B2200 and it handles well, but I want it to handle better, which is why I bought this. This is a rear sway bar from Belltech and I'm not gonna get into too much of the specifics, but essentially what it does is it makes it so that you have less body roll in corners and that's gonna make the car more flat and make it feel a bit better to drive. Now, I wanna preface this with saying Belltech's website has two different sway bars that they list when you look up a Mazda B series. One of them is incorrect. It's actually listed for the Ford Ranger, which is not the same truck and is not going to work. So I'll put the part number somewhere on screen so that you know which one to buy, because if you buy the wrong one, it's not gonna work on your truck. So you wanna make sure you get the correct one. With that being said, I'm gonna get the back of the truck up in the air, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start the installation. So it was kinda hard to record, but I managed to get the rear sway bar a little bit mocked up just by getting it over the rear axle. You just kinda gotta shimmy it in until it works and get it past all the hardware and kind of figured out how the mounting situation works. And you're gonna have to bend the brake lines here back a little bit and the brake lines over on this side back a little bit in order to fit the hardware that actually mounts the uh, pivot bushings for the sway bar. Overall, it's not too difficult. The difficult part is after this when you have to drill holes in your frame rail. I'm going to loop up the pivot bushing for our sway bar. so that I can access the place where the end links go, so that I can mock up the end link hangers, and I can actually install the uh, sway bar fully. And after that, nothing else but just to put the wheels back on, and I'll be done. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm pretty much gonna assemble the sway bar end link on the end of the sway bar there as if I were actually going to install it so that I can get uh, the idea of where I need to drill into the frame rail down. Overall, not too difficult of an installation, honestly. It's a lot more intimidating than it actually is to do. step is going to be to move the jack stands to be under the rear axle so that the vehicle's at right height when we do the measuring for drilling spots. That way we get the correct locations for everything. We've kind of run into the problem of there being a brake line right on the frame rail right there, which is like exactly where the end link hanger needs to be. 
So I think I'm going to just try and bend that back somehow. I'm not really sure. But I'll figure it out. Yesterday, after uh, finishing the sway bar install, I noticed that I had the uh, actual bushing for the sway bar contacting my exhaust pipe up here. And every time I hit a bump, it would make like a clunking noise because at ride height, they would be in each other's way. So I'm gonna try and bend this brake line more and slide this over here. So there's just one last little step that I forgot about, and that is to put the, uh, the sticker that it comes with on my truck window so that everyone knows I'm cool. There you have it. So until a couple seconds ago, it was a pretty nice day, not rainy, a uh, nice fall day. So I'm gonna take my truck on a drive to kind of show off exactly how this rear sway bar affects it. Um, really not going to be able to show all that much because it's not really something you can display that easily. We're just going to take it on a nice little twisty back road. Might not be able to push very hard because the ground's going to be wet, but we'll drive and hopefully you guys can get a decent view despite the windshield wipers being on. set up your truck for drifting, I think this is definitely a good buy. But with this rear sway bar, I've found that I can keep up with some more nimble cars in the corners. It's actually been kind of like, I want to say about five months since I put this on. And I know that's, this video has been in the works for a long time. Now, you do have to watch yourself a little bit with this, because especially on wet roads, oversteer, rain, no weight on the rear axle, you will slide. So, Maybe not something I'd add to a daily driver, but this build is pretty much for handling if you guys couldn't tell already. There is one thing that I feel is a little bit important to mention, and that is it kind of causes the rear end to feel almost like it's initiating the turn before the front end, which I think means probably could use a little bit more chassis stiffness on the front. Um, something like stiffer springs, maybe a four-wheel drive torsion bar swap, or uh, like Beltec Street Performance shocks maybe, maybe even just their Nitro Drop shocks I've heard are decently stiff. 
um, and that would be a decent upgrade, I think. It's still got a bit of body roll, but I can tell when I'm taking corners, especially super duper tight corners, that before I could only take it like 15 because of the fact that I run my tires against my fender, I can now take them at a probably 5 or 10 mile an hour higher speed, which the front sway bar install that I did, which is a stiffer sway bar, that helped with that, but adding a rear sway bar onto it when it had none in the first place made a way bigger difference for that. I I really love the way that the truck handled with just the front sway bar, and adding the rear sway bar makes it almost a completely different vehicle. I do find it to be much more enjoyable after the rear sway bar install. I can definitely tell I'm able to get a lot more grip out of those rear tires. It's just that you're also going to end up being able to reach the limit of them way quicker than you would otherwise. This is a nice little fun stretch here. I like this part. Very pretty. Though, uh, there was an incident where a Ford F-150 was speeding here and it was coming over a crest really fast and he almost hit me head, head on, but you know, that was a little spooky. Yeah, this hill right here, if you're in a bigger vehicle, going the opposite way, it's not very fun.
almost touching the bed kind of thing. But if yours is not, and you just have a factory exhaust, it's questionable whether it'll fit if you're lower. And it depends to what degree you're lower. I think this is a really good add-on to your truck, but it is a little pricey. Not pricey in the grand scheme of things compared to other cars, but when it comes to modifying these trucks, they're generally pretty cheap, and this is on the higher end for modifications you can do. So, I do think that it is worth it if you're looking for handling or for drifting. Either way, good part. Beltec did a good job with designing it. It fits pretty well. You do have to modify the frame. You have to drill into it. It can be a little scary. And I wouldn't blame anyone for not putting it on because of that. But, good product. Would I recommend it? Yes, with the caveat, get the front sway bar as well. And put that on first, see how you like it, and then go ahead and put the rear sway bar on. Because the front sway bar helps with things. Rear sway bar really helps, but can be a bit much depending on what you're doing. With that being said though, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.